Train by day, Kyle Wigginton podcast by night, all day. Pop, Jermaine. Hell, um, anyway, oh, hello, yeah, hello, yeah, yeah. hello, hello, uh, hello, all. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just as awkward on stage <laughs> in real life everywhere. You just kind of, kind of roll with the awkwardness and see if you can make it a. Uh, Funny, or just move on from it. But yeah, I, yeah. See, that was my my fault on stage. I couldn't I couldn't roll with the awkwardness. Ah, yeah. I, I got to be cool, man. I I I I think that I got over awkwardness at an early age. I got exposed to embarrassing uh, myself at an early age. Uh, uh, middle school was a motherfucker for uh, developing, um, uh, you know, gifts, uh, even goals or. Uh, trauma, uh, man. Uh, whew, uh, I I was uh, in third grade and uh, we sat in these like hard, it's like it was almost like ceramic plastic chairs. You know what I mean? It was really yeah. uncomfortable. It was cold and hot in the summer times. But man, I, I I have a thing when I sneeze, I hold my nose, mm-hmm. and uh, I must just at the lunch. I I sneezed and held it, and I farted at the same time. And the sound, it sounded like an amphitheater. Like it traveled all the room. It didn't smell, but the girl next to me had a crush. She was like, ew. I ran out of the class and just, I, I think I, I crawled into a, a, a beach ball. I was uh, ashamed. Um, but I think uh, I had another incident. It was like two years after this. I'm sitting next to my crush in middle school. Um, different I, girl? Different girl. Okay. Different girl. This is like, oh, and I had my arm on her desk. And she goes, why you always have my your, your arm on my desk? I didn't notice it. I, I was just just being spacious. I don't know, whatever. And she goes, you like me or something? And I go, you know, a nervous kid. No. But I fuck it. I sat, went home, regretted it. And so I went, I started making her love notes. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking like I'm old school simp, you know? <laughs> like with the, I, I made construction paper love notes. Uh, I made it like an envelope. And I, I, I kept it going for like three weeks. And I couldn't resist it. And the last one I sent, I exposed who I was, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, those should come to me. Oh, my God, I love these. Nothing happened for days. We was at recess. I think we was playing dodgeball. And then it was like they coordinated it. Everyone boxed me out. Like, everyone was in a box, and I'm in the center of it. I, it, it, was, it, was like, it was like squid games. I was like, what the fuck is about to happen? And then the, my crush comes out and her best friend comes out. Like her best friend was like a referee. She was like, hmm, I see you've been sending my friend all these weird love notes. Why don't you just tell you like the girl? And I was like, oh, all right. All right. Ty- Tyrion. I'm, I'm, I'm sending your name right now. Tyrion Ash. You, I said, Tyrion, I like you. And then uh, Martin was big at the time in the TV show. She went, ah! like a brick wall. And the whole crowd went, oh. I think I think I farted. I think I, I pissed on myself. I was. <laughs> I, it was. It was very. So I mean, I think once you kind of like you get over it, after a while, you know, you just kind of have to learn how to live with it. And that's with on stage. You know, what I mean, it's like that first time, the second time, the third. It's gonna be awkward. But then you just keep rolling with it. Like I'm pretty sure you weren't good at at what the podcast in your first time. I've I've never not been good at anything. I've been awesome <laughs> at everything. No, it's it's it's. So, first of all, those kids set you up. That's fucked oh, up. Oh, dude, I, I, I couldn't. I, I can't make this up. I, uh. But I think you bring up a good point. Like my childhood was very awkward and very weird too, which maybe that's why we do the things we do today. You know, like well, I think most people who go into the arts they have like very awkward childhoods where they don't really fit in. Hmm. So then they like spend their whole life like doing these other things that I don't know if it's like that they're trying to stand out now. But I just think that like you develop skills that make you good at doing things like getting up on stage or like podcasting or acting in front of a camera. I think those are skills that you develop whenever you're kind of like an outcast. Um, that's very interesting. I, I never thought about, uh, did you come up with that thought in the after, like the hindsight or did you have that motivation through it? Like, you know, I'm going to just get through this awkward moments and stick to my niche. But I, oh, no, like I guess during, what, in I, the time that it was happening. Yeah. No, I had no clue what was going on. Like I just, I didn't know why, like, you know, people were weird to me. Maybe I was a weird kid back then too. Yeah. Which is like what led me into doing these things. I don't know. Like it could be either way, I guess. I, I even, this is some shit that I even feel like I'm still going through at my adult age. Uh, trying to fit in. You don't feel like you found some people that you can fit in with? I feel like you're fitting great with comedians. Yeah, 
maybe I, I have a thing where I want to fit in with everybody. And I guess that's just idealistic. You're not going to be able to fit in with everybody. No. Uh, but I guess that I'm the kind of person like I want, I want, Every, I mean, not, I don't want everyone to love me, but I want the capacity to love everybody. And when I have that, I want it in return. You know what I mean? So if I wear somebody out, that kind of gets to me taken aback. Like I got to, maybe it's something I need to work on within no, I me, think, you know? I think the problem is you're trying, you're expecting people to reciprocate love. Like I, cause my thing is I, I love everyone. But if you look at the bathroom walls, you can clearly see that people don't love me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a bunch of self-loathing in the bathroom. No, oh, that's, that's what that is. It's, it's great, though. I love it. I come in here, I see a new quote about me, and I'm like, dude, I'm winning. Dude. I'm winning. I made an impact on someone. That's Even if it is a negative impact. Even if it's negative. That's, that's great. I, I, I can't wait um, for fame and popularity for the one reason for the the haters. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I think hate f- like motivates me and fuels me. Like I, I laugh at it. Yeah. Like that's how I can do ro- roasting. Like I, I just kind of like, like I felt like, like no one can roast me better than I have roasted myself. Like I am a masochistic to the highest degree. Well, not to the point of self mutilation, but I do it in other ways: tobacco, whatever, fucking, uh, yeah, uh, uh, exercising I, once every other month, right? you know. Uh, but you know, um, I think that if you keep yourself like uh, on like a I'm trying not to be like a motivational speaker, right? I'm trying to back this up. I, I don't know. I just think you just close your eyes, just keep swinging. I I, I really feel like you're gonna just land land on something. I agree. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's, it's, those are wise words right there. Like it never never let other people bring you down. Never let other people stop your momentum. Yeah. Yeah. I, I dude. I I also think that my childhood is what uh, led me into being like not giving a shit. Because mm. like whenever people say things about you when you're a kid, it tends to like you know bring you down. And if they, if you, if it's happened enough over your life, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. There's nothing you can say to hurt me anymore. I'm just going to keep going my way. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. And if I'm having a good time, not hurting anybody, get out of the way. Yeah. Mom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mom. Talking, talking to my mom. Oh yeah. What, what do you guys say to her? Um, I feel like my mom has also been like a, a big bully in my life. Damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I love her. But my uh, I I do have something that if anybody I do want to prove prove something to it to my mom, mm-hmm. not in some competitive way or nothing like that, just to show her that uh, you know, your lost boy found himself. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I why do you think your mom was a bully? Like, did she just say things or like just say you're never gonna be anything? Like what? I don't know if I was extra sensitive, but I remember my mom saying some harsh things that she can't remember to this day. Like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Your, mom, your parents, they give you beatings uh, and then you bring it back because it's part of your trauma. And they go, I don't remember that. Like, how do you don't? All right. But I remember I was, uh, I don't know, like seven or whatever like that. We was in a grocery store and I'm really, I'm going to my no, I'm, I'm thirsty. I'm going to get something to drink some water. And she goes, boy, they got water at the house. I go, well, mom, I'm thirsty. Now she says, well, swallow your spit. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I learned that day how to quench my thirst by swallowing my spit real hard. <laughs> it's also stupid, uh, but I don't. I don't know what that. I guess in the sense she taught me how to, I guess self preservation, kind of like. There's another st- like story like it deeply traumatized me. Uh, we was at a swimming pool. Like, I was like twelve. Uh, no, I was I was younger I, before I knew how to swim. Like I saw my older cousin Leslie, and she was like, like that was like my big sister, you know what I mean? Like I looked up to her and shit, and she could swim, and I was like, well, fuck, I can swim. And my mom was like, well, you can swim. I was like, yeah, I can swim myself. Leslie, do it. And jumped in the like seven feet of water, and as soon as foot hit water, I instantly started drowning. Like there's no point that I ever really swim. I was just drowning. Like wow, 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 wow. Panic, I'm yeah. like, panicked, bro. I'm like, ma, help. She's like, swim harder. I'm like. I'm doing it, you know. Just what I was like, mom, just come help me, help me. And she goes, I can't. I go, why, why, why? She goes, cause I'm gonna get my hair wet. Ah, I got that. I know that sounds so cliche, but I swear to God, that is a black mom thing. That is a real life act. And instantly, when she, I heard those words, 
I started fighting the water. I never forget. I started. Ki- I was like, I'm by myself now. All right. Well, I started kicking. Well, I got out the water and I was choking. I'm on the side coughing. I'm like, huh, huh, huh. My mama goes, Boy, you okay? I'm like, Get off me, man. You wouldn't. You don't know, worry about me now. You were in the water when I was drowning and struggling. Don't try to love me now and shit. But I, I also feel like in life, like I don't really remember any good life lessons. My mom, besides good in the military. And I tried that, and the military, they, they, after the examiner told me, uh, come back, you too fat. So I was like, well, fuck, what, the, what do I do now? Well, that obviously worked. <laughs> yeah, you lost weight. I, well, I did. I, I kind of lost, but it was just like maturity. I think I, I think I, when I was like 19, still, I was like 260 uh, in high school. Like high school, I was like 260 and just started walking, drinking water. Dude, you got me thinking now, did my mom ever give any life lessons? I, she laughed at me one time when a girl broke up with me. She laughed? Bro, yeah. I guess that's a life lesson. <laughs> Get over it, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense. <laughs> I told her, I was like, yeah, this girl did this. And she's like, <laughs> I'm like, you fucking woman. So, like, do you think that your your mother trauma um, affected any of your relationships down the line? Yeah. Definitely. That um, you were, like, either looking for something or maybe, like, just cautious? It, I remember being young and wanting to run away from uh, any woman that reminded me of my mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I started looking more in the mirror and go, well, bitch, I, I am my mother. Like I, like all those mannerisms, everything, my mom, I am my mom. So it's like, like basically, yeah, I got, I, yeah, yeah I, I'm, 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 I'm a, a slick talker, sass, <laughs> I talk, you know, all that kind of thing, arrogant. Uh a warrior, you know, uh, but a lover. My, uh, sh- I'm strong like my mom, you know what I mean? Uh, like the one of the, my mom taught me like a lot of things that built my, sh- my strength, like mm-hmm. my character. She did teach me, she taught me. I'll never forget when I was, uh, well, I'm still insecure about my weight, but really when I was fat, like I used to wear extra big clothing, like I was slouch, like I didn't want my shirt sticking to me and what stuff like that. What are you insecure like about now, bro? You're in good shape. Well, I still got my, you know, I flab because I don't work out. But I mean, even then, it was really bad. My mom, she one day she just looked and she said, "Boy, walk up straight. It's more attractive that way." And I was like, "Oh, all right." And then I just started poking my chest out and just that. She, my mom taught me uh, proper posture. That's a. I think that's a good lesson. It's a great lesson. How many slouches they got in the world? I'm, da- I, I'm dating one. I Which, catch myself sometimes slouching, bro. Oh. Being here in this in this chair, just podcasting, just like, ugh. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> I think slouching is good, especially when I'm uh, in, uh, in the car driving at nighttime because I really feel like that's uh, a good evasive a m- a maneuver so cops can't see me through the window. Slouching? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I, uh, I, get, I get scared of driving at night just because of cops. They don't recognize me. I mean, yeah, but in this city, like, I feel like it's hard to get pulled over. That, like, they know everyone's driving drunk or on some kind of substance. I think it's just a known now in New Orleans. So, yeah, yeah I, I think I there was a guy in here one time, and he was telling me he didn't have a license on his car or tags of any kind. The man, just cruising. He didn't have insurance either. Just fucking cruising around the city. And one night, he was doing a burnout in front of Miss Mays. <laughs> like, how fucking stupid are you, dude? That's that's dumb. So anyway, I, I, but, but but even to that, I for a period was driving with uh with no, but my license expired. Uh, I think my tags was expired. Um, I'm getting off of work one night. I, I had at the time like a, a little 2012 Nissan Sentra, you know, a little small little car, mm-hmm. white car, no tents, no whatever like that. I'm getting off work, man. And I get like three blocks and boop, 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 got pulled over. I'm like, oh, God. In New Orleans? Yeah. Hey, it was uh, uh, up the Miss City. Why would they pull anyone over in this city? And they, well, they were looking for somebody. They were looking for something, man, because uh, I got pulled over by two, uh, two people. It was a, a white lady and a white man. And they did the good cop, bad cop thing. Like in the movie, I swear to God, like, you know, the lady was stern and shit like that. And the guy was like talking to me and shit, you know, and I'm nervous. So, 
the comic came out of me. So I'm just starting talking about comedy. I'm making them chuckle the whole time. I, you know, I look my peripheral. She's like doing a fucking like a whole drug search in my car, like pulling out panels, looking through the trunk. And I was scared because I did have drugs in the car. <laughs> but like right as I remember right as the lights <laughs> flickered and I got startled, I like I had a one hit and I, I dropped the shit. I, I, I had a little bag. But I, I don't know. I don't know where it was. I was trying to find it, put it under my ass or something like that. <laughs> but I was like, oh my gosh, she's about to find it. But the only thing she found, dog, uh, was I had an empty bong in the backseat. Like I came from a party the night before and I didn't take it out. So they confiscated the bong they, and they just gave me like a citation for the, the expired license. Like he was like, have a good night. Why would they even take the fucking bong? It, cause I found out they pawn all that, really. Oh, they, really? They pawn it and resell it. Yeah. So silly, dude. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, like sorry. there's actually like things going on in this city that are bad. And the fact they're pulling anyone over is just insane to me. But that was look at it. That was that I uh, granted that was like seven years ago. So I, I I guess I'm still riding with that trauma. Yeah. That eventually I'll just, you know, over time get over, I don't know, make into a bit. Yeah. So we're talking about the roast battles. You said that because we were talking about comedy the night that you came in the body of the night. Hanging out, talking about comedy. And you're saying you think roast battles are like the way to go now for you, right? You're liking that a lot? Uh, man, I, when I, I think I've been doing comedy for like, <sighs> I hate to say it, like nine years. And then recognizing that I've been doing this as a hobby for fucking the majority of it. Like not recognizing the business acumen of it, you know what I mean? You know, the approaching nature, you know, the talking to people, the re- building, re- like like an actual job. I thought comedy was, you're funny, someone will see you, and then, you know, you, it goes on from there. No, it's like, but I think I fell out of love with it. I fell out of love with stand-up. I, I, I'd be very, I'm, this is my, I think this is the first time I've been this to myself. Um, and it's because it's the thing of not fitting in. Like, I think my material is, it's not, I don't think it's really fit for the city. I think the city is kind of small and can be very closed minded. And uh, eventually I'm going to get out and do other things in comedy as far as stand up. But the one thing that does hit in the city and I'm finding out it's hitting everywhere else is roasting. And I guess. I guess it's, it's my new passion. Mm. It, like it, it, it reignited my 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 passion for comedy. Um, it re it actually it re it came along the same time when I was trying to figure out how what to do with this art, like to travel, to be in competitions, tournaments. Like yeah, there's comedy festivals. I feel like that's a big fish in a barrel. But I feel like with roasting, I have a chance to go one on one with somebody. And it's just mono and mono. It's kind of it, it's it, it's it's everything I love. It's it's art. It's competition. Uh, uh, it's an, an adrenaline rush. Um, I I I I'm t- I, I'm I'm saying this right now. I never said this for comedy. Y'all gonna see me on TV with this roast, and I don't know what I I can't even see it right now. I just know I never had this, man. I never had this for like a like a vision or a pet. Even with comedy, I got into comedy by accident. I was just at work and making someone laugh. I didn't have a passion for fucking comedy. They go, she she goes, oh my god. She's like, is that a bit? I was like, what the fuck is a bit? I ain't even had to Google what a bit was. I'm like, oh, that's what they call a bit in stand up comedy. Oh, and you know, got pushed into it. But it, I, with my ADHD, I feel like roasting it focuses it, like it fine tunes it. Well, I think it's that it's that panic. Like that, that panic aspect of it. Cause if we, we talk about film, like film is like fun to do and stuff. Like it's fun to write a film, fun to make a movie, but it takes so fucking long to get these things done. And there's this competition in film. It's called the 48 hour film fest. Mm-hmm. And basically you get two days to make a movie. Oh my God. And that's where I come alive. I come alive. Yeah. And, Cause I mean, it's, it's that panic. You're like, I got to do this in two days. Yeah. Now the urgency um, is that, is that something similar to the roast battles? And like, how do the roast battles actually work? Do you have only like an hour to write or do you have days or like what? You actually have, um, I mean, it kind of depends if you like a drop in, like someone drops out, you know what I mean? It'll give you, know, probably have a couple of days to prepare, but mostly you, you get, uh, two months, uh, a month. Um, I'm in like three different, uh, roasts, but, uh, one at Howling Wolf, um, it's, uh, 
Uh, what the fuck was the question? Is that the roast beef in one? Oh, well, that's roast beef, and that's that's pickles. That's a high ho. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, but you get like a whole month to prepare. Um. Uh, but I'm like that. I'm like in your sense, like my brain doesn't really start like really kicking in gear. Like the last few days. To the last few days. Yeah. Like, I can I could come up with like concepts and little pinpoints and words and notes and you know you know but then my brain puts it all together when it's cr- when it's crunch time mm-hmm. I guess that's the uh, that's ADHD th- this, th- but that's the procrastinating the procrastinating nature of uh, the ADHD yeah literally I mean they that's what um I, I listen to a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. uh, about this stuff because I am also one of those guys um oh, good, good good to see uh my my, my fellow people one yes. of the ADHDs, yeah, yeah. yeah um and the guys on the on the podcast they always say that that's the reason why ADHDs years wait till the last minute because they need that adrenaline rush and you get that adrenaline rush whenever you have like a deadline approaching really quick so up until that time you'll procra- you'll procrastinate and you'll kind of like you'll kind of like study some of it and you'll be thinking about it a little bit but then the very last couple of days or whatever a couple of hours what are you thinking about you'll have this adrenaline rush and you'll pop it all out, but you'll have all this creativity coming with it as well because you've been thinking about it the whole time. Yeah. I've been marinating on it. Yeah. It's just been in the back of your head kind of working, working. Um, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I feel like it's kind of, uh, dangerous for anyone to go against, uh, uh, me at the light. You give me 10 minutes to roast. Probably going to get destroyed because I'm scared that I'm about to get destroyed. Mm-hmm. So it comes to like a survival nature. You know what I mean? Like it's like a, like back in when I was, let, let me drown. You know what I mean? Like it was, just, oh shit, the survival nature just kicked in and shit like that. Um, I have no other point after that. Well, yeah. So have you ever, <laughs> so I know, I know you also date a comedian. Yeah. Have you ever been in battle against her? Yeah. Um, we roasted for, uh, it was in what? july for the boogaloo fest how you were against her yeah and uh, how did that work did she like get mad at you or did you get mad at her or did, like we bring up personal things or what and that seems dangerous i i i i love my uh my girlfriend man yeah she's uh, awesome and uh i actually found i do love the fact that she's a comic and she's goofy like me mm-hmm. she doesn't take things too seriously you know what i mean like She's also in a mindset that no one can really roast her more than she's already said to herself, you know. And we didn't talk about what we were going to say. Um, if anything, I probably, like, told her, hey, don't worry about me. Just say anything. Whatever you got, babe. Like, everything you've been holding back. You got some reason, just let it out. I don't care. I was like, go ahead. Talk about my love handles. I don't give a shit. But I, I did because I'm still kind of insecure. She came out. Oh, she killed me. Talking about love handles, she said in Spanish, uh, there's a Spanish word for love handles. They call them tires. I forgot what it was. And then this motherfucker actually went and started uh, reading out uh, the tire size of my waist. <laughs> ah, it was crazy. She got me. Man, you know. Um, okay, I, whatever. You, you, you're supposed to lose to your girlfriend, I guess. Whatever. But basically, like, it's all love after that, right? After a while, I had to get over it for a minute. I was I was a bit salty by the judges. The judges they gave me like three one. Look, man, the crowd was loving every moment. Man, I'm doing rebuttals. Man, I'm comfortable. It, man, my first joke could have been a iffy flop. Okay, I'll tell it to the people. I, it's a visual people. I, I'm I'm visual. I don't tell people it was their backstories. But she had on like a bathing suit and uh, swim trunks. You know, uh, like the swim shorts. You know. For the roast? Yeah, for the roast. Because it was, it was hot, buggy, boogaloo, oh, yeah. you know, by, by the bayou. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she has dark hair, you know. And I said, girl, you look like uh, Aqua Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe that's why I lost. Okay. All right. It was a minimal chuckle. It was okay. All right. So, but, like, you were actually on the stage at Bayou Boogaloo? Yeah. That's fucking dope, dude. I didn't realize they did comedy at those at that. Yeah, they've been doing stand-up, and I think uh, roasting was, like, their new feature. That's yeah. awesome, dude. I had to come to that next year then. It was fun, man. Um, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to do it again. I want to get on the bayou and make mojitos. Think they would let me do that? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, Ab- number one mojito in, in New Orleans, right here. Absolutely. Yeah, so I get on the bayou and just sling out some mojitos that day. Make some, make some, some Jack, bro. But what do we have? Uh, in another bar tent, like another bar tent set up on the water. Well, Can I, uh, I want to be on the water, bro. Oh, you want to be on the water? I want to be on it. the water, yeah. Oh, you really meant that. Oh, all right. I no, thought you 100%. meant like, like, a, like a stage or something like that. All right. No, I want to like make a little platform and get on the water and sling mojitos. 
What are you, a carpenter? You can build, you can build that? Why not? All right. Who do you think built the stage? Uh, you know, um, uh, Jesus. I just, I just, <laughs> it, came my God. it came from God. It came from God. That's why I'm growing my beard out. So to be just like to Christ. Be like, to be like Jesus. Yeah, so uh, roast battles. Where's your next one at? You said there's one at, uh, where are these places that you're talking about? Um, I have one coming up at Comedy House. Um, actually, it's next Sunday. Yeah, I think I saw you post that today on Instagram, didn't you? Yeah, I got a, uh, I'm, uh, bad. I'm bad with promoting Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, it's like next Sunday. At, That's uh, another part of an, being an artist uh, these days is you have to constantly promote. Um, I mean, you, you basically have to do it all, man. It's the like same thing as running a business. I, I have to stay, I have to maintain a constant uh, social media presence for the business. It's a nightmare. Well, I also feel like maybe you're just better at the multitasking maybe because I, I, I already know my crutch. I, I would need, I guess everyone has a manager at some point, but I know for damn sure, like I need a manager consultant and fucking a, a, a monk at the same time. Fucking keep me sane. I need a, a, a team of fucking therapists. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I For me, it's systems. I built systems out mm-hmm. um, to where I know that I have to do this, this, and this before I can get this. Kind of like a reward system. Mm-hmm. So even even working out, like every day I have to get up and I have to go to the gym in the morning. And I only get breakfast after I go to the gym and like do one task after that. Wow. Like I force myself to do certain things. I, my only reward system is, yeah, I, I do like a, a fasting and my reward is just uh, eating. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I need stronger convictions. All right. How long do you uh, fast for when you fast? Uh. Just like water and coffee. I probably wait till probably like two or three o'clock. So you do like intermittent fasting like every day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever done like a long fast? Like two days, three days? No. Right. I, don't, I don't have that type of motivation. I'm not training for a movie. I'm three day in. fast is where it's at, dude. And what does that do? It all kind of good stuff. It's all kind of benefits. Um, One of the, the biggest things and uh, I'll kind of, I'll break it down the way I understand it, mm-hmm. which is not scientific at all. But uh, basically, your body stops digesting after like a certain amount of time because uh, you clear out all the food, right? Mm. And then what the body does is it starts uh, digesting the old cells. Uh, so the cells that would become cancer, then they start getting broken down into uh, nutrients that the body can use. Uh, so is that part, a part of ketosis? Uh, I, once again, I don't know the scientific aspects. Yeah. I just know how I understand it. And, um, one of the easiest ways, so I, at first when I did this, I was just like straight water mm. for three days and it was fucking miserable. But then I started, um, listening to some podcasts about it and they were saying that the first day do only water. Then the second day you start adding bone broth in and bone broth is a fucking game changer. They got a lot of nutrients in it. Yeah. Right? So when you're, but when you're fasting too, man, cause like I, I also tried bone broth when I wasn't fasting and I was like, this is fucking horrible. But when you're fasting, bone broth is like liquid gold. It tastes so delicious. Hey, what do you drink it like a soup or like what? You just I, you pour it in a cup and you just uh, you drink it like a water. Yeah, so I'll I'll buy the um the bone broth in like the glass bottles, and then I'll just uh, heat it up in a in a pot, and then uh, dump it in a cup and just drink it. My dumb my uh, my alcoholic ass would make a fucking uh, a bone broth martini and uh, a dry bone broth martini with some olives and shit. Uh, ugh. You son of a, I think you, you don't want to drink alcohol when you're fasting. You don't want to drink alcohol while you're fasting. Yeah. I, I am aware that uh that your body uh can uh, can eat fat. Like can like if you're not if you're not consuming calories, you're not eating, then eventually your body has to start gain, getting those calories from your from your from your body. And yes. you know, if you, yeah, if you have a lot of fat in your body, it's gonna pull from your fat. Uh that's all fat is, is stored energy. Stored energy. Um, and I, I'm, I, all my life, I have been like a, a person to try to find the, the lazy way to do things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I was like, like losing weight and then I recognized I was losing weight and I started working out I like, I'm telling you, I was, I was heavy. I was doing workouts four days a week. Uh, I think my one point, my body fat got down to like 11%. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And then I just got tired of it. Like it was like it was a rigmarole. I think at the time my motivation was so I can fuck longer. Absolutely. Yeah. It was just so I can have more endurance and sex. And then you get older and you're like, I'm sick. I'm tired of sex. And it was like, well, if I'm getting tired of sex, then what the fuck am I working out for? Like I could I found out how to how to get sex, a good sex within five minutes. Fuck all this 15 marathon shit. I'm gonna make you pass out in five. Fuck that, man. <laughs> <laughs> got time for this shit, man. We gotta do we got work to do. Well, I mean, plus you've been in a relationship for a bit. So I mean that probably also cuts your motivation for working out. I oh, 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 oh. No, it doesn't? Well, well, when I stopped working out, that was in my twenties. Uh like consistently. And then I started finding the 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 not the, I guess the cheat way, but the lazy way, dieting. Yeah, dieting is where it's all at. And then your body gets used to dieting. Your body's like start to recognize your tricks. And now you got actually in your mid 30s and recognize, oh my God, I got to start working out again. Oh my God. I mean, it's all this working out and dieting. It's just uh, both. They both got to yeah, go hand in hand. I'm just, I'm trying to not be a lazy fuck anymore. Bro, you should have saw me in my mid 20s. I looked absolutely godly. You look godly now. What are you talking Bro, about? Bro, I'm telling you, in my mid-20s, I was down to about 4% body fat, 5% body fat, and I maintained it for two years. Oh, wow. All I was doing was eating boiled chicken and asparagus. Like, that was my diet, dude. But I was so ripped. I mean, if I flexed, like, you would just see muscle fibers. And what, what, was, the, what was your motivation? It was just like an addiction? It was... No, so at that point in time in my life, I was actually modeling for Dillard's Clothing Company. Okay. Yeah, I was their body. And, um, so, I mean, I had to like maintain a certain shape. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I was, I was going hardcore for that. But then whenever I stopped doing that, I was like, let me just see how far I can push this. And so for like an extra six months or so, I just like tried to see how low I get my body fat. Mm. And then my body started doing weird things. Cause when your body fat gets that low, your body, your body actually starts dying. So it wasn't, it wasn't like any health issues. Dude. But I remember one day I was sitting at my, my desk that I was working and I had an orgasm just sitting there, just sitting there. Yeah. And I text like the, I text my dietitian. I was like, yo, this is what just happened. And she's like, um, well, your body fat's too low. And that was a, an, a prostate release. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the body is a wonderland. It's, it does weird shit, man. And it, there's things that we don't even understand yet. Like I was talking to a, a, um, uh, what, what did he, he gave me his like fancy title, but it's, it's a guy that's working on his PhD at Tulane. And he was dropping some knowledge on me yesterday that he said they just discovered. And I, and he said that every cell has a sex. So that there are male cells hmm. and there are female cells. Hmm. And uh, like that just brought up a whole fucking basket of questions in my brain whenever he was telling me these things. Like, because they say we were born, we're not born with a gender up until like a certain point, but we still have those like uh, certain hormones and remain like a uh, like estrogen, like yeah. uh, like estrogen is like uh, still a part of our, our our function as as men. Like we still need estrogen. I mean, estrogen to to function to survive. I forgot what the the pr- properties are, but I mean that's not. It's not that far fetched. I could, I could, I can kind of, I can believe it. Uh, well, for me, when you told me that, I was like, hang on a second, so. If you take female blood mm. and then put it in a male, is that going to change like, you know, something? Because, you know, people get organ transplants and they start having the same traits as the person they get the organ from. Really? So, yeah, have you heard this? No. Yeah, like there's there are people that they, they get an organ transplant and then they'll start like craving coffee or some shit like that. And like the person who died and gave the organ used to be like a heavy coffee drinker. Oh, wow. Because it's still laced in their DNA. Yeah, something like that. So my thought was that if you give, if I give you a a pint of female blood, are you going to start, you know, bobbing your head more? Uh, uh, Craving dick? Oh, my God. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Oh, my God. I I don't want to bring it to the uh, craving dick. Also, both fitting in. I you know growing up I also got uh, mistaken for gay a lot. Why? Because oh. this shirt? Maybe maybe because Did you I, always wear these I, shirts. Maybe, maybe because I had a dress. I mean, yeah, you got a nice little earring, and you're all put. You're well put together. Maybe maybe, maybe is that what it is? I can see that. Yeah, because if you look at me, you're like this guy's definitely not gay. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I, um. 
I guess you could say uh, social influence. I guess it, I've always been open with people, you know, you know, and over time, you know, I guess relationships not working out and I guess I had the mindset of a chick, you know, not to say I'm a try dudes, but I was open to the thought. Like, like I'm at a, a fucked up situation, like but with friends, we're, it's a friend, we're playing spin the bottle, but it's like with one girl, that's like a really, <laughs> that's not the, a good number to be in. And of course it's my turn first. And it spins on the one gay dude in the fucking room. And we're all doing coke. This is ugh, this, this coke, coke and drunk days. Uh, and we kissed. And I was kind of weird. I never kissed a dude before. Like what kind of kiss? Like, like it, tongue and everything or just like. I didn't use tongue. I kind of like went for movie kiss. You know what I mean? Like. But you say you mwah. didn't. Does that mean he did? Yeah, he did. He kind of like he followed my lead. You know what I mean? Okay. And then I could tell he, he was unimpressed. <laughs> and I got competitive. <laughs> so I went, I was like, well, fuck it. And at the end of it, he was confused. He was like, oh, did he mean that? And I was uh, not confused. It was like, yep, I'm definitely fucking straight. That was fucking rough to get through, my God. Uh, not even on some uh, some homophobic shit, on some shit on where I reckon it's like technical. I can't be with the guy because he had a beard and then, I never knew what it was like to have a beard on your face. You know what I mean? It felt rough. It rugged. It itched. Uh, his lips were strong for some reason. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't for me. Hey man, at least you tried. Hey man, you give it to college try. Yeah. And you, you didn't back down. See, you, you could have said, you know, no, I'm going to spin again. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I would have dumbass. But, but you didn't, you know, you stayed in the pocket. Yeah. And plus, you know what I mean, it did help. That was, it was like my friend. So I guess it helped with the being all right with the fucking app shit afterwards, you know. But. So like what, um, did any of the other guys make out with the dude that night? Or were you the only brave? So no, I think it was a setup. That's what I'm saying. No one else, <laughs> no one else kissed him. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think I could do it, man. I, I also thought about it even for a movie. You know what I mean? Like if, if you get acting, like you, maybe you never know what kind of scene. I'm not the person turned on a, you know, a, a role. You know, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went and auditioned for a a movie and um, feature film, mm. and they, uh, I the part I auditioned for, they like we don't really want you for this, but we'd like to have you for this other part. And would you read for it? And I was like, what's the part? And they told me, and I was like, nah, man, it's, I don't feel like doing it right now. I don't feel, I don't feel like. This is a part that I want to play at this point in my life. Mm. Like maybe later down the road, but as for right now, no, nah, you have to get somebody else. Now, what is is that advice as far as like you don't want to get typecasted early on, or just not something that's in your comfort zone, or if you have hard noses and you, that's you know around your comfort zone, then you know stick to it. No, for me it was just uh, um, anytime I'm doing a film or playing a part, mm. I want to I want to feel like um, like I want to be on set. Okay. And I didn't feel like that part was going to have me wanting to show up for set every day. Mm. So I didn't feel like I could give an authentic performance if I uh, did this. It would just be me going through the motions. I got you. And I don't like going through the motions. Maybe the same thing as doing doing a podcast. Like if I show up for a podcast and I don't actually want to be here to ha have a conversation with you, mm. you're going to be able to tell. Yeah. Like the audience is going to be able to tell. Like I want to actually want to be everywhere that I go now. Yeah, man. I feel that. Um, I I have never not wanted to be. I, I respect what you do. Um, is this what you call entrepreneurship? This? Yes. I, I right. I just call this fun. You put on at your own time. It's yeah. Like you make your rules is at your own pace. It's yours. I got. I remember. You, people would have this stories about they quit their job to do comedy and I've been doing comedy and I've been still working my fucking job. And, uh, I never had the motivation to want to quit up until, uh, I got new corporate at muck, corporate muckety mucks mm. and they're trying to micromanage. I hate that shit, dude. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to lose it, man. That's not the way to make a business run. Nah. Like, and I, I tell everyone this too, like even with this business right here, the only reason it runs as good as it does is because I stay the fuck out of the way. 
Like if there's an issue, I step in and I, I deal with the issue. Right. But other than that, I let the employees do their own thing because that actually makes them want to be at work. Yep. Even even the the host of the comedy show, like Ben, like I get the fuck out of his way. I'm like, dude, it's your show. You run it however you want to. And they, they actually take ownership of it and they they roll with it. When you start micromanaging people, they they don't want to be there anymore because they have no freedom. It's like you're you're literally treating people like slaves. Yeah. Not the way to go. Whatever company you work for, tell them to come talk to me. Yeah. That's why I, I, I this comedy thing has to work because otherwise I can't I, I won't be happy I won't be happy to the people that I'm around mm. if I do this for much longer. That's that's a miserable thing to to recognize that uh you're making people other people around you miserable because you're miserable on the inside. Mm-hmm. That's that's a really f- fucked up place to be in. I Dude, I was there. Yeah. I was there too, bro. Whenever I was twenty, um, early twenties, I was working in IT for a while. It was before I quit and got the dealer's gig. Mm. I was working in IT with my degree and I was just so miserable. I was going out drinking every single night. Mm-hmm. And even uh, the relationship that I had at that point in time, it uh, ended because of that right there. Yeah. Cause I just wasn't happy in my life. Yeah. So I was just like pouring it over into other aspects of it. The, 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 was it, uh, the lashing probably, uh, resentment, uh, all, all these little things that you irritate you at this, you don't recognize it's cause it's probably cause you're not happy elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying not to, uh, cause it's not, it's not, look, it's not fair, uh, to the person that you're with. Um, and I, the one thing that I have never been lazy on, I will say is to be like a better human. That sounds so corny. That's my, uh, that's my two o'clock, bro. We have to wrap this up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, pop. Be- where can the people uh, find you at? I hate to cut you off right there. Oh, but. no, no, no. Uh, the people can find me uh, Sunday at Comedy House, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, for, uh, it's going to be a roast show extravaganza. Man. And then just follow me online. Uh, P-O-P-G-E-R-M-A-I-N, all lowercase on Instagram. Dude, we got to do this again very soon. You're dropping some awesome knowledge there. I hate that I scheduled too many podcasts in a day this close. Yeah. I'm uh, actually, uh, I'm a, uh, get deeper because I really feel like I can get deep into uh, like self like growth. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that, that sounds so corny, but I really feel like a lot of people really need to go look in the mirror and work on yourselves, man. Cause I promise you, you think you're a good person. But you really a hunk of shit. Check yourself. That's true. Wise words from pop Jermaine, everyone. Thank you for giving we me a hunk of shit, man. It's all right.